morning class can you hear me yes ma'am okay <clears throat> so today we are going to discuss something about cesarean section okay so can anybody tell what is cesarean what do you understand by cesarean section anyone just what is your knowledge about cesarean section no one So cesarean section, by definition, it is an operative procedure whereby the fetus is after the end of 28th week of gestation, that is after the period of viability, they are delivered through an incision on the abdominal wall and the uterine walls. So it is basically an operative procedure to deliver a baby. Okay, it excludes the delivery through an abdominal incision of a fetus lying free in the abdominal cavity, either following the rupture of uterus or in the secondary abdominal pregnancy. So it is basically an incision through the abdominal wall and the uterine wall to deliver a viable baby. Okay. So something about history. It is the word uh, cesarean section is derived from a Latin verb ceder, which means to cut. And um, a Roman law was passed in 1715 BC before Christ. And uh, it derives its name from the notification Lex Segera, which means performing the abdominal delivery in a dying mother in an hope to deliver a live baby or to deliver the baby and bury both mother and the baby separately. Okay. So nowadays, the incidence of cesarean section is steadily rising. Previously, around two to three decades back, it was only 10% of the true deliveries. But nowadays, it has increased to almost 30-40%. So why it is increasing? Because women, they're having fewer children. And the greater percentage of births are likely among the non-liparous, that is, first time, and who has increased risk of cesarean delivery itself. Okay, The average maternal age is rising so women are giving birth at a later stage of their life like after 25 26 so the older women they are especially the nurly para they are increased risk of cesarean delivery and nowadays there is increasing use of the electronic fetal monitoring like cardiography is being used widely so this technique itself is also associated with increased cesarean delivery as compared to intermittent fetal heart rate auscultation okay and most fetuses which are presenting as, as breach are now delivered by cesarean section as they are, they, they are more concerned with the fetal injury and various kinds of legal, legal litigations to the, to the attending doctor or physician. So, so the, all the patients with breach are, they are del being delivered by cesarean section, thereby increasing the cesarean rate. And the frequency of instrumental delivery that had, it has decreased a lot. The forceps and vacuum delivery it's almost nil nowadays. So the rate of cesarean section is increased. And the rate of induction of labor is being continuous in rise, and which itself leads to increase in the cesarean delivery. Okay. And nowadays, the prevalence of obesity among the women of reproductive age, they have increased drastically, which in turn increase the rates of cesarean. Okay. And uh, rates of cesarean delivery has also increased in case of the medical disorders of pregnancy, like in case of preeclampsia, eclampsia, and in case of diabetic mother. So these patients undergo cesarean delivery most of the time. So thereby increasing the rate of cesarean section. And nowadays, most of the babies uh, in their second pregnancy, if the patient is having cesarean section in the previous delivery, that most of them delivered by cesarean section in the index pregnancy itself. So this all leads to increasing the cesarean section rate. Okay, another one is the elective cesarean section. They are being increased. Even the mother can request for cesarean section nowadays. So the rate of cesarean section is being increased. 
and uh, nowadays more of malpractice litigations related to the fetal injury didn't spontaneous or operative vaginal delivery has increased and these all have increased the rate of cesarean section okay so having said that there are a few indications of the cesarean section and they can divide into absolute indication and relative indication in absolute indication the baby has to be delivered by cesarean section so there are five absolute indication of cesarean section the one most is central placenta previa where the placenta is covering covering the internal walls okay the next one is absolute say pelvic dysperfusion third one is pelvic mass occupying the uh, lower uterine segment advanced carcinoma cervix and vaginal obstruction either it may be atresia or stenosis these all are the absolute indication of cesarean section and in relative indication the baby may deliver by vaginal but um, because of various other indication they land up in cesarean section the relative indication of cesarean section are relative cephalopelvic disproportion either the baby is big or the pelvis is small a previous cesarean delivery fetal distress fetal distress is the most common indication for cesarean section nowadays another one is dystocia in dystocia there is three p's one p means passenger another one is passage and number three is power power means uterine contraction okay either the passenger is very big to pass through the delivery canal or the passage is very small for the baby to go through that canal to have a normal delivery or or the uterus is not contracting well so these all lead to dystocia and cesarean section another relative indication is abruptio antepartum hemorrhage which includes abruptio placenta and other degrees of placenta previa mal presentation like bridge presentation footling presentation uh, shoulder presentation brow face presentation these all leads to cesarean section another one is failed induction and next is bad obstetric history bih means bad obstetric history and medical disorders like diabetes hypertension these all are the relative indication of cesarean section okay are you hearing me yes ma'am yes, ma so types of cesarean section according to the where we give the incision number one is lower segment cesarean section which is performed nowadays is lower segment cesarean section or lscs another one is upper segment cesarean section or classical cesarean section we can divide the cesarean section according to the timing of operation as well where it is emergency cesarean section and elective cesarean section elective cesarean section is is where we plan for the cesarean delivery so we plan we plan everything we give date to the patient when to get operated and everything is planned and we go for cesarean section that is elective cesarean section in emergency cesarean section because of various obstetric indication where there is fetal distress where the mother is is distressed or mother is having fits eclamptic fits in those case in those cases we have to operate immediately and those kind of cesarean section is known as emergency cesarean section okay so something about classical section or upper segment cesarean section in classical cesarean section the baby is extracted through an incision made in the upper segment of the uterus okay so there are few indication of classical section nowadays also when the lower segment approach is difficult like in case if there is presence of dense adhesion in the lower uterine segment because of the previous operations like myomectomy or surgery around the bladder if there is dense adhesion and we cannot approach the lower segment then we go for upper segment cesarean section and in case of severe contracted pelvis like in case of osteomyelitic patients with pendulous abdomen where we cannot approach the lower segment we go for upper segment cesarean section and next one is where the lower segment approach is risky like in case of when there is big fibroid in lower uterine segment or there is central placenta previa where the placenta is covering the entire lower segment segment so there will be much of bleeding when we approach through the lower segment and we have to go through the placenta to deliver the baby in case of central placenta previa so on on those cases we go for upper segment cesarean section 
So lower segment cesarean section nowadays, basically we perform lower segment cesarean section. Um, classical section are rarely performed nowadays. In these cases, they, the baby is extracted through an incision made in the lower segment through the transperitoneal approach. We open the peritoneum and we reach the uterus and do the cesarean section. Okay, so what we do to do a lower segment cesarean section. So preoperative preparations, pre-anesthetic checkup, the anesthesia doctor, they check up about the well-being of the patient, all the vitals are measured and blood grouping and cross match is done. We have to take the written informed, written consent. We have to tell patient about the consequence of, about the um, complications of the cesarean section and how we are going to operate with the patient, what anesthesia we are going to give and we inform them and take a written consent. And fetal heart sound is to be checked before and after the after giving the anesthesia and unitologist should be made available. So here are the pictures showing the steps of cesarean section. In the left hand side, uh, foley is being inserted and then after that, Painting and draping is done after fetal heart sound is heard using povidin iodine. Then we give incision in the lower abdomen. That incision that is being given is financial incision. Financial incision is a upward smiley incision given two centimeter above the symphysis pubis, around 10 centimeter in size. And then we divide the rectus in the lower left we are dividing that erector seed. And what we can see is the low erectus abdominis muscle. And in the fourth picture, the peritoneum is being opened. Okay. And in up, upward, upper one, the visceral peritoneum, the psychouterine fold is being identified and then it is cut. And in the lower one, the bladder is dissected down and the abdominal wall is retracted with the Doens retractor and uterine incision is being given and extended and baby is delivered in the upper left one. The baby is delivered here in the picture. The forceps is applied to deliver the baby, head of the baby. We may or may not apply the forcep. We can deliver with the help of hand also by insinuating the light right hand in between the head of the baby and the maternal symphysis pubis. And then in the lower one, the placenta is being delivered by control cord traction. In cesarean section also, the placenta is delivered by control cord traction, same as in case of the normal delivery. And then in the left picture, the angle of the uterus, it is, it is being hold, held with the green armature's forceps, okay? And then the uterus is being sutured, okay? The uterus is sutured in two layers, okay? The myometrium is sutured in two layers with absorbable suture. Usually we use vicryl, which is a delayed absorbable suture to suture the uterus, okay? So, at the end of the procedure, we see whether the tubes and ovaries are normal or not, okay, bilaterally, so that we may not miss any kind of pathology when we are doing cesarean section. And then in the right side, the rectus is being sutured. Rectus is sutured with either delayed absorbable suture or non-absorbable suture. And the skin incision is being sutured with subcuticular suture, okay? This is the after suturing the skin, okay? So everybody understood the steps of cesarean section? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So after operation, the patient is shifted to post-operative ward and we give prophylactic antibiotics, analgesics on the day of operation. And on the day one of operation, the patient is ambulated, allowed to feed orally and baby is best fed 
Immediately after delivery, the baby is breastfed and oral feeding to the mother is started on day one. And if all every, everything is normal, then this patient is discharged on day three or day four of operation. Okay. So what are the complications of cesarean section? So complication can be divided into intraoperative complication and post-operative complications. So intraoperative com complication, there may be extension of the uterine incision either down vertically or laterally. So when it is extended down, then it can go up to bladder and the bladder may get lacerated or it can go down to the vagina. Lateral extension may lead to the broad ligament hematoma or injury to the ureter. Okay. And there may be uterine laceration, there may be bladder injury, which is rare. Ureteral injury may also occur, one in 1,000 operations. Sometimes there may be gastrointestinal tract injuries and hemorrhage. Hemorrhage may be because of the uterine uh, extension of the uterine incision or because of the PPH, atonicity of the uterus. Post-operative, post-operative can be divided into immediate post-operative complications and late post-operative complication. In immediate complication, maybe postpartum hemorrhage. Because of postpartum hemorrhage, patient may go into shock. Other anesthetic hazards, like if we are giving, uh, mostly the cesarean section is being done under spinal anesthesia. So sometimes the anest spinal anesthetic hazards can take place. Patient may have infection. Patient may have deep vein thrombosis and thromboembolic disorders, wound complication, and secondary PPH. Remote, patient may develop chronic pelvic pain, back pain, incision hernia in due course of time, intestinal obstruction because of bands and adhesions, and in future pregnancy, there may be scar rupture, rupture of the uterine scar. Okay, in fetal complication, patient may have, fetus may have iatrogenic prematurity and thereby developing respiratory distress syndrome. Okay. So something about comparison of classical versus lower segment cesarean section. So why are we doing lower segment cesarean section nowadays? So according to technique, lower segment cesarean section is slightly difficult as we have to approach down and upper segment is much easier. In uh, lower segment, the blood loss is less. In upper segment, the blood loss is more because we are cutting the thick uterine wall. The wall is thin, and so when we suture the lower segment, the upper position is perfect, and there is perfect peritonization. So in due course of time, when there is perfect peritonization, the healing is better. So scar is much more good in case of lower segment cesarean section but in case of upper segment the wall is thick so perfect apposition is not possible and perfect peritonitis is most po not possible so the scar thus formed is weaker and so it gets ruptured in subsequent pregnancy in case of upper segment cesarean section but in case of placenta previa and transverse lie there is little technical difficulties in case of lower segment and it is comparatively safer in up, upper segment cesarean section. So when uh, when we go for a cesarean section in case of placenta previa and transverse lie, we go for upper segment cesarean section. Okay. In post-operative, there is less hemorrhage and shock, less peritonitis, and adhesion and intestinal obstruction is less in case of lower segment cesarean section. So in upper segment, hemorrhage is more as we are cutting the thick wall. There is more chance of peritonitis and adhesion intestinal obstruction is more because of imperfect peritonization. So because of all these, post-operative convalescence is relatively poor in case of upper segment and morbidity and mortality is high in case of upper segment cesarean section. So as I have already said, the wound healing is better in case of lower segment cesarean section. So there is less chance of scar rupture. The chances of scar rupture in further pregnancies are on only 0.5 to 1.5% in case of lower segment cesarean section. And in case of upper segment, the scar is very weak, so there is more chance of scar rupture. So around almost 10% of the patient will go into rupture uterus in case of upper segment cesarean section. Okay, so we have all uh, said that cesarean section rates are rising and the uh, 
the morbidity and mortality of cesarean section is much more higher than normal vaginal delivery. So we have to decrease the rising cesarean section rate. So how can we reduce the cesarean births? We can do external cephalic version <coughs> if the patient presents with bridge delivery. In few selected cases, if it is appropriate, we can do the external cephalic version. External cephalic version is the turning the baby into cephalic position manually. Okay. So another one is we can go for trial of bridge vaginal delivery in suitable cases. So we can go for vaginal delivery. We cannot. We can avoid cesarean section doing all, cesarean section to all the babies who are bridge. So we can go for trial of vaginal delivery in case of bridge. And we can go for more of the operative vaginal delivery. We can try forceps or vacuum in case of second stage of labor where it is appropriate. So that cesarean section rate is reduced. And we can do the partographic monitoring of the labor so, so that we can intervene in between so in order to obtain a vaginal delivery. So to avoid the cesarean section, we can do the active management of labor. Active management of labor means we can augment the labor or we, so that she will deliver vaginally. And in case of selected cases, we can go for vaginal birth after cesarean section. There are certain criteria which can be fulfilled. Which if the patient fulfills, then she can go for trial of vaginal delivery in case of previous cesarean section as well. Okay. So these are the measures to reduce the cesarean births. So we, we, from the cesarean section, the question that can be asked during during the exam, either practical or theory, it may be definition of the cesarean section, the indication of cesarean section, why the cesarean section rates are increasing nowadays, and what are the measures that we can reduce the cesarean births, and what are the complications of cesarean section. So these may be asked during your exams, either viva or in the theory class okay am i audible okay that's all do you understand any questions no, do you have any question Okay, then thank you.